at 9am. And it's so hot. <laughs> kind of bodes well for the day, but we had these uh, conditions last year when we came to the same place, but we came a lot later in um, September. So yeah, the Cotswolds just a really nice kind of warm place to go by the looks of it. I think I've got to go further down this road. Again, I hope I'm going in the right direction. It's so picturesque, but there is absolutely no phone signal here. I don't know how anybody copes. So we were here last year um, for the same event, slightly same event. Um, there was a bigger group of us, but because there's only me running the event this year, um, We've made the group size a bit smaller, it's just so I'll be able to give everybody that comes along a little bit more individual one-on-one -on -one time, whether they want it or not, <laughs> that's, that's their choice. And we've also extended the lengths of the walks as well. I think last year we were around about three hours or so. Um, this year we've made them about four, I think actually today is going to be more about five because we've got the Arboretum and the Falconry Centre to do. So we wanted to give it a little bit more time and I'm in no rush. This is exactly what I'm here for today, so there's no point actually rushing this just for me to get home to do more work or something else. So let's just kind of uh, take the time that we've got and actually do things properly. So I've got five brilliant photographers with us today. Uh, a couple I've met previously on photo walks last year, so it'd be lovely to see them again, but three completely new people I've not met before as well. And that's, that's the nice thing about this is that I think it creates a nice sense of community because a number of the photographers that do come on our walks um, they know each other from our Facebook groups and here we are now so we're at the Batsford Arboretum down in the Cotswolds and also shout out to the Cotswold Falconry Centre who will be visiting later on this afternoon for a flight display so I'm not a big wildlife photographer it's just not something I do a lot of really um, but I think today is going to give me a bit of a purpose and it's going to give me a focus to try something I don't normally do because I am really, really inspired by a lot of the photographers that, um, that take amazing wildlife uh, photographs, bird photography in particular. Um, and I've just never seen it as a skill that I think I have the patience for. But today we're in a very, very dedicated setup really with, um, with having a flight display and being in kind of right up to the birds and being able to kind of see them clearly. I don't have probably the patience to do it out in the wild necessarily. Um, so I think today is gonna to be really, really fun on that basis. I really need to show you some of the views here. Sorry, I keep looking left and right because I mean, the sun shines super bright on this side. Hopefully it's not too bright on the screen. Um, but yeah, all, all the fields, I mean, the Cotswolds, if you've ever been to it, is known for its uh, outstanding landscapes. And that's one thing I love to shoot is landscapes. Um, so I think it's going to be a bit hazy today, really. I can already see. And we had this similar conditions last year. It was lovely and warm and really nice and dry, you know, perfect on that sense. But it was so bright that there was a lot of haze in the sky. So I certainly needed a few filters to just bring the exposure a little bit more into bounds. But um, this is why we give it a little bit longer as well today in terms of the, the length of the walk. So we don't have to kind of take a few shots in the run, go to the next spot and, and try it again. If people want to go a little bit slower and they want to crack out the tripod, the filters and all of the bits and pieces like that, then they can do because there is absolutely no rush for it. Weather's looking really, really cool. Um, so yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to have a really, really good day. So I'm going to unplug you guys. I'm going to get all my stuff from the back. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes before it opens and I'm going to head down, get everything sorted there and then head down to our meeting point in a little while and we'll get to meet our photographers. So. I am all sorted, been in to the Botanical Centre already, got all our tickets, got our maps for everybody as well. So I'm just sat out here waiting now, I think it's so nice. Right, so you're at 1.6 of a second, so you can make that shutter speed a little bit quicker because you, you're not really going to be able to go much smaller on your aperture than that and your yeah. ISO is as low as it can be. Yeah. So the first thing is the shutter speed, but if you liked the length of the shutter speed, if you liked that kind of flow of the water, what you'd have to add then is a filter over the lens to reduce oh. the amount of light, um, which is not, not a scary thing at all. Um, I've got filters we can actually apply it with. So I reckon 
or maybe even see the one down on that lower branch it's not fully opened yet but the oh, colors yeah they're, yeah they're nice really like those pinky tones and against green yeah. reds and well, I say reds pinks and greens are very very good complementary tones and then even shoot up a mixture you see the ones that are like closed up still that, that color is really great I'm not photoshopping that bit out but <laughs> <laughs> but I like the mixture between like the sums that are closed and some that are open so I'd get 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 pretty close in on them um, oh I just that's it and that's it there and yeah because then you've just got that, that bright white and pink subject and then the rest of the shot it's all very similar in the It's a weird mix, isn't it? It's a really, really weird tree almost, when you I'd consider it. How's that looking? So, oh, that's lovely. That's a cracker. That's yeah. great. That's really nice. Yeah, then, yeah, good. maybe kind of try come back to this one then, because we didn't yeah. didn't do that one, did we? So I think, well, again, it's all personal preference. I just love the shapes of these. They're so defined. It's so nice and neat and again against that greenery it looks so pretty that's lovely yeah. try it as well again like the waterfall we were talking about because your subject is tall rather than it is wide try also um like a portrait and maybe if you do it from here yeah. you'll get like a, a bit of a background blur of the other one as well yeah. so if you focus on that you may get like the echo of the other one so if you're almost there and shoot yeah. vertical i think you get another really nice shot on that one that's lovely. Get even, get closer, get closer. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fill, I was going to say, if you have to fill the frame exactly, yeah. but kind of be deliberate. So, I mean, you can crop it always afterwards, but that's always going to lose you a little bit of resolution. But you're shooting in raw, aren't you, anyway? Yeah. That's lovely. Getting that look, just love the way that the, the shadow crosses the bottom to yeah. just high. So I may end up, I may suggest, I was saying to Andrew about editing out that little bit of greenery. Yeah. I know it's nature, but yeah. I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I get, I get, you get, get to kind of perfectionist at some point, going, oh, just that little bit we're taking out. But that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, Paul. That's great. Brilliant. Yeah, it's just as almost as you come out of it, you can kind of frame it amongst the, the trees tree. yeah even the trees being just get that little moment where it doesn't cross over it's a nice kind of frame between it but also kind of closer up it's great as well I'll try and keep out of everyone's shot <laughs> bit of light in his eyes and, and that light on his beak really really brightens up the shot look he's very inquisitive he is isn't he <laughs> yeah. i think the key is just yeah i've switched i had it on a wide um continuous setting for the, the birds in flight but i've changed just going back to that single spot yeah. uh, we talked about earlier yeah. and going back to uh, just single uh, autofocus one shot and if you've just using a small spot you can literally just put it, focus on his eye, yeah, and then hold the focus in it. Ooh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you, he's done it a couple of times. That one, he just keeps insisting on flying into the walls. Oh, doesn't look very appetizing. No, <laughs> he's enjoying it though. Where does it have? That's better. Not oh, easy. It's moving at a bit of a pace.
absolutely fantastic day. Really, really good session with everybody. I feel a lot of people have got quite a bit out of it today, learning about their camera, learning about how to adapt to certain scenarios, which has been kind of quite challenging because the light, as much as it's been very bright and sunny, as soon as the sun disappears behind the clouds, it changes the exposure massively, almost by a couple of stops of light, because the clouds are quite dense. So it's been really, really good teaching everybody about the changing of exposure and how to pay attention to where the light is falling and when the light disappears, how to adapt. So I think that's been really, really valuable. And it's taught me a lot of things as well when photographing the birds. That's an experience that I don't think I would ever normally have seeked out personally, but with doing it through the workshop, it's really helped me understand the perils and the hazards and what you need to do when photographing birds and therefore how to adapt more towards it. So that's information that I can then learn and pass on to the next group of people that I work with in such a scenario. So this is the benefit of workshops.